Well, welcome to Under the Hood with Logic IO. Uh, in our session today, we'll discuss and show how to configure complex and customized services. My name is Emma Gaquin, and I'm the Director of Demand Generation here at Logic IO. And our demo guide today is Navia Prabhushankar, one of our sales engineers here. To set the stage, I'll talk about some common pain points we see in the services industry when it comes to quoting and customization. And then Navia will show a live demo of how we support those challenges. We'll also open it up to questions at the end of the session. So feel free to use that Q&A box. A few housekeeping items before we get started. This is being recorded and the recording will be sent to your inbox since you registered within 24 hours of this event. So if you need to jump or also wanna share this around with people, you will have that ability. Again, due to that Q&A, please place your questions in the box. I can either answer them directly or I'll wait to share them with the rest of the group at the end. If your question's a bit more nuanced, I will get you an answer. It will just be post event. Let's dive in. So we have seen a couple of common struggles in the services industry that I'll talk through. And we've had a couple of our customers ask us, how can we deliver precisely tailored services to our customers while adhering to project timelines, ensuring accurate quoting? Now I will admit no one has asked us that question verbatim, but altogether, those are the, the kind of sense that we get right, from our friends and services. We know that complex services require countless options and variables. Because of diverse customer needs, offering countless options allows companies to cater to a wider range of customer preferences, ensuring that perfect fit solution. Customization and personalization is also important to services companies where finely tuned services to match customer specifications are required. We've all noticed that buying preferences have changed over the past few years and will continue to evolve at a rapid pace. As those buyer preferences change, services companies must adapt to the changing trends and have that systems that allow for that flexibility. And the companies who are able to adapt to these changing trends seamlessly and to keep up with their customer needs will have scalability and be able to grow larger and happier customer bases. We've also seen customer services require integrated, integrated data systems, and many right now are living off disparate data systems. Integrated data systems allow for accurate customization of the customer's unique needs and preferences. Services companies must be able to access a wide range of customer information, including past purchases and preferences. When companies have streamlined operations, there's a reduction in that manual data entry and the need for redundant processes, which reduces the risk of error and is also more efficient and cost effective. With integrated data systems, guided selling becomes a possibility and a superpower where sales teams and customers can have access to up-to-date information on product, personnel, and service capability, as well as pricing. All of these lead to an enhanced customer experience that increases customer loyalty. The last theme we see is complex services require accurate customer communication and guidance. And we see many companies struggling and having siloed communication with their customers. Customers of service companies, oh, too eager. Customers of service companies expect perfect fit solutions and therefore need to be able to clarify service requirements quickly and accurately. No matter which channel customers are purchasing through, sales reps, the website, the ability to manage expectations around timeline and end results is critical to a happy customer. When there are bottlenecks such as CPQ only being used as order entry and not for deals, cust companies use the ability for customers to provide real-time feedback due to delays in communication. When customers feel lockstep with the buying process, you're more likely to be able to succeed with upselling and cross-selling opportunities because of that increased trust and buy-in from customers. Logic enables the flexibility to configure every unique services deal. We turn the struggles that we just talked about into success. 
meaning a streamlined setup and admin where you can maintain fewer SKUs, have lightning fast performance for your sales reps or customers, regardless of the interface and the ability to support even the most complex requirements. Logic.io creates a unified data system and streamlines the quote process with guided selling around real-time product or service availability, as well as staffing and the ability to attach guarantees and agreements automatically. Lastly, Logic.io creates a consistent customer experience no matter where the quoting is taking place. With our flexible UI, Logic.io can enhance your seller's experience within CPQ or your buyer's experience on your website with guided selling built in to show off your expertise and ultimately encourage those cross-sells and upsells. Now I'm going to hand it off to Navia and she'll show us some of this in action. Thanks, Emma. All right. So in this demo, think of me as a rep or estimator at a services firm. We have a new project for a software implementation, so I need to configure the right services solution for my customer. I'm going to start out with a new opportunity and a new quote in Salesforce CPQ. Where logic comes into play is the product selection step. I'll search for my configurator here. And you'll notice it's a general configurator. That price is actually going to build out as we define the customer's needs. So we'll go ahead and launch logic. And to get started here, I'm prompted to set a project start date and then select which type of services are needed. A new tab is going to appear where I can then define the project scope. Now on the right, my deal summary is always going to be visible. I can see that the region has pulled in from Salesforce based on the account I'm selling to. And then the duration and pricing information is going to build out as we configure. Once I select implementation services, I can actually directly select which resources I need, or I can just start to answer questions about the customer and the project. So right off the bat, we'll see some resources have been automatically assigned based on those project details. And I'm getting an error that an implementation engineer is not available within the term date. So I actually need to go back, select a later start date. And we'll actually see that error disappear. I'm able to then select an implementation engineer here and that gets added to my resource matrix. Now I can go ahead and continue to fill out details about the project throughout the configuration. You'll notice some defaults are set and tooltips, dynamic messaging to really guide me through this process. For my technical details, notice as I select cloud as my deployment scenario, that's going to add a junior solutions architect. But if we switch to a hybrid or on-premise solution, that's going to switch out to a principal solutions architect. So those complexities are going to be reflected right here in the resources. To select some system integrations, there is a menu of applications I can choose from where we do have out of the box integrations. But if I wanna narrow this list down, I can go ahead and select the exact types of systems to integrate with. And you'll see the list is much smaller and I can start to select specifically which applications we're gonna integrate with. If there's a need for a custom integration, I'll go ahead and add that here and you'll see an additional 100 hours is going to be added to that integration engineer. So again, complexity is reflected below. You can go ahead to my additional requirements. Let's go up and let's say we need some go live support knowledge transfer. Well, now the system is telling me that it's recommending some managed and learning services. So it's really allowing you to make those cross-sell and upsell opportunities relevant. And I can go ahead and select those services, get some tabs to configure those as well. Let's say my customer also requires some data migration. Well, I'm gonna get additional fields now. I can populate specifically the number of records that need to be migrated. And once I make that selection, we can actually see that the implementation duration has now been set for me at about eight months. But let's say we take that up to 10,000 records. Well, we can see that's gonna be a much more complex implementation and a much more complex project. So the implementation duration is going to be 12 months. Down in the matrix, we'll see all of the resources that have been assigned based on that scope. 
opportunity here to remove or add any additional resources. And I can specify the number of them. We can increase them as necessary, as well as increase the number of hours for any of our specific resources. But I'm always going to get the recommended number of hours notified. You'll notice that the rates and prices are always going to be locked down. So again, those guardrails can be put in place to ensure that you know, users have only the permissions that are needed in order to scope the project accurately. Going back up, let's say the customer would like to include some advisory services, you know, to get the project organized right off the bat. We just need a consultant. You'll see a different way of pricing this out. I can select the specific experience level. That's going to set the corresponding rate. And we'll see that increase with the experience level how long they're going to be with the project and what percent of time they'll dedicate. Now on the right, you'll see the bill of materials or my line items building out here for each of my services. That's going to be showing you the breakdown for the implementation and advisory services. And as the customer or the rep here in this case, this is all I need to see. This is what's going to pass to the quote line editor in the background. I'm also tracking the full PSA details. So this will outline all of the resources, the quantities, even their start and end dates based on the project start date I selected at the beginning, as well as that implementation timeline. So this can be any information like the scope details, technical requirements, really anything that's needed downstream to let's say be sent to the PSA system for that time and resource tracking. But all we care about for the customer is those totals. Now, as I continue along, I can select manage services. Again, I'm prompted to answer some questions about the project. You'll notice my workload type actually pulls in from the previous tab. So those interdependencies are being reflected. Now, different from what you saw in our pricing on the professional services with that individual resource breakdown, managed services are going to be recommended now network and security management based on my inputs, and they're gonna be priced slightly differently as a bucket of hours based on the total number of devices. So you'll also see some tier-based or volume-based discounts built in here. So take notice as I increase now the number of devices, we'll actually see the number of hours increase, but that list price per hour is going to decrease. So that volume-based discount is built in. Similarly, for security management, this is going to be based on the total number of users. So if we go ahead and set a starting point here, take a look at that item, and we'll see as I'm increasing the number of users, that quantity of hours is increasing, but the list price is going down, and it's being reflected real time dynamically in my line item here. Finally, I have the option to select learning services directly from this drop down menu. I'm given descriptions, all of the information I need in order to make the accurate selection. And this is going to prompt me to specify additional information, any requests that are needed, and then I can override any of these selections if I want, you know, only two courses, then that's going to get reflected here. Last couple of things. My line items have now built out further in the sales bill of materials. I have that product hierarchy for learning services. So all of those child products are going to be nested within the parent product. And I can choose to add a margin to this estimate. So this is going to dynamically update those prices. You'll see the list price and that total price getting updated, but the total cost is going to stay the same. So we have that option to compare. Once I'm ready to go, I can hit quote. This will take me back to Salesforce CPQ in the quote line editor. I can proceed with discretionary discounting, approvals, even document generation, which we'll take a look at. So once I save this, the details are going to be reflected in that original quote where we started. I can even push that information now to an SOW. So here's what we can see, all of those amounts. And let's say we wanna generate a document. I'm gonna be prompted to select my template. I want a statement of work in this case. And once I select preview, that's gonna show us a specific statement of work here 
where some of those inputs on the business and technical requirements have actually passed from logic onto this document. And just an example here to show you. That's going to be all for the demo. So any questions, please feel free to post in the chat.